Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. It's Thursday, November 21st, 2013, and here are our top stories. Tonight, the spy state continues its meteoric rise and now wants to peer inside your car. Good news on the battlefront, GMOs have been banned in the Big Island of Hawaii, and the InfoWars crew continues to make waves in Dealey Plaza. All this and more on the InfoWars Nightly News. Well, our top story tonight is the fight for the First Amendment. Now, tomorrow is the 50th remembrance of the assassination of JFK in Dallas, and the Dallas government has done everything in their power to try to shut down any mention of the assassination, to try to make it a commemoration of his life. That's commemorable, but that's not what happened 50 years ago in Dallas. It was a very dark time, and we need to look at what happened. It does not respect the memory of JFK to ignore what happened or who did it. We need to investigate this crime. People still want it investigated after 50 years because the story doesn't add up, but they have censored it. Now, we have a right as the people in the First Amendment, it's recognized by the government, that we have a right to peacefully assemble and to redress our government for grievances. A lot of people have grievances about this way, about the way the investigation was conducted. And this is what happened last night. Yeah. Who are you with? I'm with Dallas Police Department. Oh, a member of the establishment. They want to turn this into Tiananmen Square. So bring my camera people over. I want a live feed. Get my camera people over here. I can't wait to be given your unconstitutional thing. I swear to God, just like Pittsburgh, I'm going to sue everybody. So just get ready. And I will sue you personally in civil rights court. So get ready. You think, you think we're your slaves? You think this is North Korea? You think this is Tiananmen Square? You're going to find out. Better think again. Officer just told me to get off this property. He says it's private property. Oh, I know. Wait, let's interview this cop. Yeah, no, no, it doesn't matter. They love it. They love serving the system. You wait till your pension funds are gone. You wait till this country's gone straight to hell. Just wait. You're going to get what you want. Now. Now. Now, what is this I hear? Who's the uh, plain clothes person that's going to tell us they're going to give us tickets for handing out free speech in America? Oh, she huh? said that. Go ahead and say it on camera. Say it to the news. Start say it to America. Breathe. Smile okay. while you're doing it. If no, tell us. Everyone can hear me. Give Here, me the tell us on the bullhorn. Yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Use the <laughs> There are two city ordinances in the city of Dallas that are being okay. violated right now. I'm Our here to inform you of those violations. Within 75 feet of a freeway or service road, according to the Dallas City Ordinance, you may not hold a sign. Now, as Alex said in other parts of the video, if they had a pretty woman driving the tanks at Tiananmen Square, I guess that would be okay. This cheerleader for the Nazi state looks like a soccer mom, and I guess she's from the Ministry of Love, but she's there smiling and politely telling people that they can't be within 75 feet of the road, they can't be holding any signs, and of course, if they're not within 75 feet of the road, they won't, they'll be inside of buildings. They'll be on private property. There is no place to stand. So that's like saying you have to have a permit or a ticket to be anywhere close to the JFK assassination ceremonies, and yet you can't get those tickets. You can't get those permits. They're absolutely out of control. They have to be stood up to. Now, we've got more reports later in this broadcast about what happened today. And, of course, Alex is organizing for a large protest tomorrow on the actual anniversary of the assassination. Now, when we look at what the government has done with the JFK assassination, with the lies that we've seen from the Obama administration, with the power grab that we've seen from the Obama administration, it just gets worse every day. We now see that a FISA court judge back in 2009 was amazed that the NSA didn't follow his orders. Well, isn't that amazing that the NSA would not follow his orders if they don't follow the Constitution, if they don't follow the law? This very judge is not following the Constitution or the law. Understand that a FISA court is an abomination to our Constitution. There is no jury. 
There is only a single judge. There's nobody arguing the other side of the case. He makes a pronouncement, and now is the worst part. The pronouncements are in secret. Nobody is allowed to see these decisions that come up. And this declassified decision looks like this. A big black mark on who was involved with it. And then pages like this. Do you see anything there? Okay, it is nothing but a head fake. It is still a top secret classified document. This is the kind of suppression of information that we've seen surrounding the JFK assassination. This is what your government thinks you need to know about what they're doing. But they want to know everything about you. No matter what you do, no matter where you go, they think that they should know everything about you, especially if they don't like your politics or if they think that you speak out too much about them. That's what we're going to see happening. But look at this article from Ohio. This is a, a Don Salazar's article, an Ohio man arrested for driving a car with empty hidden compartments. Now they have passed a law in Ohio saying that if you have concealed compartments, because those compartments might conceivably be used to carry control substances like drugs or weapons, that because you might be able to carry these things, that therefore it's illegal to have that. <laughs> so it's kind of a pre-crime. It's kind of a twist on pre-crime and the civil asset forfeitures that we've seen along with the drug wars for many, many years where they charge a car or they charge an airplane or a boat or a stack of cash. They charge those inanimate objects with crimes and they confiscate them even though they know and because they know that the owner of those objects did not commit a crime and they know that they can't prove anything so they seize the actual asset. Now here we are with them saying that if you even have something that they call a trap car, that's now a felony. And the law itself, however, says that this does not apply to a box, a safe container, or other items added to the vehicle for the purpose of securing valuable electronics or firearms as long as the said container does not contain a controlled substance or visible residue of a controlled substance. But again, it's just an out of control government doing whatever they feel like doing arresting us, charging us, confiscating our property when no crime has been committed. This is what the war on drugs has been about from the very beginning. It is not something to help society. You don't help society by using force. You help society by helping people to understand what their limits are, what the consequences of drug abuse are. You cannot stop it by interdiction. That was never their objective. Their objective with the war on drugs was to take our civil liberties. And from that standpoint, the war on drugs is not a failure. The war on drugs has made government much more powerful than it ever was that we could have ever imagined. And it creates this kind of Alice in Wonderland legal structure, a framework for tyranny. And that's what we're seeing being done over and over again. But it gets even worse on the road because now we're seeing that there's this massive push from the government to know everything about where we're driving and even to the extent that they want to know who's in the car with us. But look at this first article, Privacy's Worst Nightmare. This is from RT. Company advertises that they have over one billion license plate records. Now, this company that's putting this as Vigilant Solutions, and they're advertising this to law enforcement, and they have this clever little acronym. They always have these great acronyms, LEARN, Law Enforcement Archival and Reporting Network. And what they do is they collect information from license plates, so and then they retain this information and cross-correlate it. And as this one blogger pointed out, Federal, state, and local law enforcement appear to agree with the NSA's collect everything mentality when it comes to tracking the movements of innocent motorists. And they point out that many jurisdictions have no retention policies in place. So once they identify your license plate, they can keep this, in some cases, indefinitely. But in one example here in Jersey City, New Jersey, where they only have 250,000 residents, a quarter of a million, they have over 10 million of these license plate recordings where they've identified when and where people are driving because they can keep those images on file for five years. So the government in so many cases wants to know everything about you. This is like the NSA. This is like the recordings on the telephone poles where they're recording our voices, where they're taking pictures of our faces to use for facial recognition. They're doing it in our cars. They want to know and track and control our every movement. This is what the TSA will be doing. They are the travel security administration, not the airport. It's going to be everywhere. Our government wants to contain us as if we were slaves. Now look at this, the NHTSA, that's the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, may mandate this year 
that new cars have to broadcast a lot of information to each other. They have a protocol called vehicle to vehicle, V to V, and it would broadcast via radio wave the car's location, direction, speed, and possibly even the number of passengers that it is carrying. Now, when this got pushed back, this is a story from CNS News, and when they talked to the NHTSA administrator, he said, oh, we have no plans to really use this against you. We've heard that before from Obama, haven't we? This is what he said. Now, when CNS News contacted NHTSA, a spokesman said that they have no plans to enable the government or private entities to track individual motor vehicles. Well, we've heard all of that before. We heard that from Obama when he signed the NDAA. We heard that he had no plans to use these broad powers to arrest people without cause, to hold them indefinitely, to deport them or transport them to another jurisdiction. Notice, too, that this is always being done in the name of safety, always taking our freedom and our liberty in the name of security, in the name of safety. But that's not the trade-off. When you lose your liberty, you simply become a slave. Now, the fact that they're going to do this or proposing to do this what, through what they call a rulemaking process to mandate these things highlights exactly what the problem is that Rand Paul is now addressing with some new bills that he has. He's put out three new bills that really cut to the heart of what is wrong with our legislative process, what's wrong in Congress. The first one is a Read the Bills Act. And he says that it's been imposed upon us excessively long bills, largely written by an unelected bureaucracy that are incomprehensible, cumbersome, oppressive, and burdensome just like Obamacare, just like TPP, the Trans-Pacific Partnership that's being crafted now. They pull in thousands of pages of legislation and nobody has the time to read it, even if they're inclined to do so. But then the next part of it is one subject at a time. And again, that would go back to what we saw with the NDAA. That is a National Defense Authorization Act. That's actually a funding bill to fund the military, but in it, they sneak in the indefinite detention Act. And so we see that over and over again, that they'll sneak something in that isn't the main focus of the bill. That's another common problem in Congress. And then the third one is write the law. See, instead of having the bureaucracies do rulemaking mandates and delegating this authority to them or to the executive branch or to the judicial branch or to any quasi-public agency or to airports, for example, instead of that, have the Congress do their legislative duty. This has been by design, however. When Nancy Pelosi said, we'll have to pass the bill in order to find out what's in it, she, it wasn't as crazy as most people thought, because for the longest time, Congress has intentionally delegated this, these tasks to these bureaucracies so that if they go overboard and the people get angry, they can always come in as if they're the heroes on a shining horse and they can roll it back and say, we never intended for it to be used that way. A perfect example of that is Representative Sensenbrenner, who was the one who introduced the Patriot Act. He tried to use the Espionage Act of 1917 against journalists just a year and a half ago. Now, because after Snowden, all of this NSA spying has blown up in his face, he's coming in and saying, I never intended for the Patriot Act to be used that way. Baloney. He absolutely did. That's what this is all about. That's why Rand Paul is putting in the read the bill, write the bill, and one subject at a time act. He is spot on with what the problems are. Now, we also have some other good news. We have actually another legislator who has introduced, his name is Bridenstine. He's a congressman, and he's introduced an act to repeal the 16th Amendment, and to end the IRS. He says, the Fourth Amendment to the U.S. Constitution guarantees the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, effects against unreasonable searches and seizures. The 16th Amendment effectively negates the Fourth Amendment. The 16th Amendment should be repealed, and the IRS should be eliminated. He's absolutely right. The form of taxation that we have through the income tax is a civil liberties issue. It simply isn't the amount of money that's being collected. It is a civil, civil liberties issue. It's not about revenue. It's about how they can control you. And it's a healthy sign to say, even though this will probably never pass, it's a healthy thing to see that this is being introduced by someone who is a sitting congressman. When we would introduce this with a Libertarian Party 20 years ago, everybody would say, no one is ever going to take you seriously if you're calling for the elimination of the income tax and the IRS. Well, 
things have changed now. People are a little bit wiser in the political sphere. Not everybody's paying attention, but anybody who's paying attention knows we don't need to give up our civil liberties in order to run this government. And another piece of good news, our final piece tonight, is in Hawaii. They have passed some mandates to eliminate GMOs on the island of Hawaii, as well as in Kauai. They have also advanced legislation that would increase regulation of biotech companies like Monsanto, Dow, BASF. They put a $1,000 fine in Hawaii for any violator of the ban on growing genetically modified organisms. So there is some hope, just as we see in Hawaii, if any change is going to come, it's not going to come from the federal government. It's going to come from the state and local government. So that's where you need to be applying the pressure. Now, stay tuned. We have highlights of today's events in Dallas in defense of the First Amendment. Don't miss it. My friends, Alex Jones here to tell you about some of the most important information concerning you and your family's health. Radiation levels have more than doubled in the last 60 years in the Northern Hemisphere from all of the nuclear testing and radiological accidents. Radioactive contamination is now in most of the food supply. There's only two ways to avoid this. Move south of the equator or properly protect your thyroid with nascent iodine. Looking to protect my family, I've done deep research. Nascent iodine is the purest, cleanest, absolute best form of of iodine to protect yourself and your family. It's made right here in the USA, completely non-GMO. I searched out the best quality and now have developed a double strength form of nascent iodine, exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Nascent iodine is on record as one of the only safe ways to detox from fluoride poisoning. Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Secure your super high quality nascent iodine today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gate. We have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with a new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. Well, the actual remembrance of the JFK assassination is tomorrow, but Alex was on the ground with the crew, and he had some interesting encounters with people from outside the country. Here's their perspective. Hey, how's it going, brothers? Fellow thought criminals. We just thought we might, you know, give a little representation to folks that don't buy the official story. You want to shake hands? Or, maybe, or I guess the Soviets will come after you if you shake hands with conspiracy people that don't believe known liars. What about a little hip hip array for McAdoo? Look at that. Nice lady over there fighting tyranny. A hip hip array for Gucciardi. Hip hip array for Bound and Jacobson and uh, McBreen and all. Hey, how you doing, sir? Good, good. Hi, Alex Jones. I'm George from Canada. Hey, fantastic. So what are you doing here today? Well, I'm here for the ceremony tomorrow. Oh, fantastic. I've driven down um, from Montreal. I've driven uh, approximately 2,000 miles to be wow. here. What do you think of the Secretary of State John Kerry saying he doesn't believe Oswald acted alone? Well, I'll not get into this. I'm here for the history. And, uh, well, the history of, uh, uh, history of... So how he really got killed it, it, it isn't history. Well, it is history, but I, I, I don't come up with opinions. Did they tell you you couldn't have an opinion to come here? <laughs> no, it's because I love the States and... Uh, Let I me ask you a question. Yeah. You seen that movie, They Live? The movie They Live? No, I haven't seen it. I think you might be the actual star of that movie when they're in, like, the subterranean area when the guy's giving the speech. Okay. I should be the guy? Hey. Just say something. Say, I got one that can see and point right there at the camera. I got one that can see. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>
<laughs> All too easy. Impressive. Most impressive. I see you've constructed a new lightsaber. Indeed, you are powerful. Anyways, that was fun, huh? Now I'm going to go into Optimus Prime. Um, quotes. Autobots transform and roll out. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here. I want to get McAdoo's take, McBreen's take. I want to get everybody's take here briefly when we exit. Well, well, I mean, we came, we saw, we conquered. You guys want to walk down maybe to the bleachers? Maybe check that out? McAdoo, quit being afraid. We've done nothing. We're Americans. But if we act afraid of everything, then they're going to bring in the Soviet tyranny. Where are you from, bro? Belgium. You got 10 seconds to talk to me? Alex Jones here. All right. Do you believe the official story? that uh, Lee Harvey Oswald acted alone. I don't have to believe I'm a journalist. I, I analyzed the facts and I heard the witnesses, but uh, I'm, I, I do not have to decide something. Exactly, so as a researcher and a citizen, do you, be do you believe the official story? Uh, it's, a, it's a belief, a personal belief, and I, I told you I'm a journalist and I'm here to work, so I, I will not give my advice because it's my per But you don't buy, but I mean, if I asked you if Santa Claus was real, you could say, no, he's not. Even though you're a journalist, is, okay, is the sky gray? Is the sky gray? Uh, the sky is for me gray for this moment, <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay, is Santa Claus real? Ah, uh, I still believe in St. Nicola. Okay, so obviously you believe then that one man killed Kennedy as well. Maybe I was not here and I didn't participate at the commission. At the you believe there were WMDs in Iraq? I don't know, I was not in Iraq. I tried to... Tell what I see and what I can... But, but, but old journalism was actually going out and finding the truth. Uh, nowadays, it's like you're not allowed to have an opinion. It's like, does that building have red bricks? I cannot say. Uh, does that woman look beautiful? I cannot say. Does that food taste good? I cannot say. Is our government evil? I cannot say. If you want that I say that it wasn't possible, I say it wasn't possible. Okay. Absolutely. Oh, you're okay. You're happy now. But no, no, but I mean, but I mean you know the truth. I mean, at a certain point, look, look, I mean, as a reporter, as an analyst, as a pundit, I say what I think, but I also do journalist work. There's a lot of stuff I can't say what happened. We don't know exactly why the Concord blew up or whatever. We have ideas. We don't know why the Hindenburg blew up. But I mean, we don't know what really happened with the Maine, though we think it was a false flag. But with this, we know it's totally fake. The Gulf of Tonkin didn't happen. A year later, that's declassified. God bless you there in Belgium, sir. What's your name? Matthew. Well, stay tuned after the break. Jakari Jackson will be checking in with Darren McBreen, who's on the scene at Dealey Plaza. We're on the march, the Empire's on the run, and the InfoWars Army is standing strong. Wake up your family, friends, and neighbors and break the matrix at InfoWarsStore.com. Learn the truth and spread the message of liberty with the world's most comprehensive collection of books and documentary films. Maintain a healthy metabolism and energize your body to perform at peak health with Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Protect your family and be prepared with survival foods and emergency preparedness kits. And now you can drink safe water with your own ProPure water filtration system, which removes fluoride and other harmful chemicals from your family's water supply. Save 10% with the promo code WATER. So join the revolution, InfoWarsStore.com. Many anthropologists and archaeologists believe that before man even discovered uh, the power to harness and use fire, we were involved in agrarian activities. That is, taking the seeds of plants and then replanting them to produce more. The very foundation of our modern civilization and human culture is centered around the planting and cultivation of edible plants. Here are some of the amazing deals at InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. The Survival Seed Vault by My Patriot Supply features only the finest survival heirloom seeds for a robust and hardy garden, even in the toughest times. We also have starter varieties of the deluxe seed packages 
or fruit, salad, salsa, peppers, medical herbs, and more. Go to the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. And remember, the revolution against tyranny is growing. And welcome back. The InfoWars crew is in Dallas right now, covering not only the assassination of John F. Kennedy, but also the assassination of free speech. Darren McBreen is one of those in the crew, and he joins us now to talk about his experiences. Darren McBreen, tell us what it's like to be there on the ground in Dallas, witnessing this horrendous violation of the First Amendment firsthand. Well, Jakari, I don't know if I would have believed it if I didn't see it for myself, but the city of Dallas is basically commemorating the 50th anniversary of the assassination of John F. Kennedy by censoring free speech, by censoring the First Amendment. Large portions of the city, they've sectioned them off, they've put up barricades, and as far as Daly Plaza goes, Forget about it. Daily Plaza tomorrow will be on total lockdown. So if you don't believe in the official fairy tale that Lee Harvey Oswald acted alone, you're not getting in. It's so ridiculous because we saw the clips yesterday. John Bowne showed them and you guys showed us today as well on the Alex Jones radio show of the people actually cultivating, digging up the spot where John F. Kennedy was shot. Well, I hear you, and but they see they are telling us that we are not even allowed to film there. We are not allowed to hold up these signs. We are not allowed to display banners unless the banners are displayed in these preordained or pre-approved areas, wherever the hell they are. We've yet to run across them. Certainly not in Daly Plaza. So, you know, the First Amendment is null and void in Dallas, Texas right now. Now, McBree, tell us what happened last night. You guys went to the Federal Reserve and you encountered some officers saying that you couldn't protest, you couldn't have your, your flyers and your posters within 50 feet of the, uh, excuse me, 75 feet of the Federal Reserve. Is that correct? That's correct. I missed a lot of that. I was driving the truck, so I dropped them off. Alex did his thing. They called me, and then I came around and, and picked him up. But, you, you know, it happened so fast. As soon as we left, it was within just a couple minutes. I kind of wish we would have stayed because we would have really got some dramatic footage. But as soon as Alex left, a whole bunch of police officers pulled up, and they were looking for him. Apparently, I don't know if they, they wanted to arrest him. We're not sure really what went down. Well, that's, that's, oh man, I just can't imagine these people. By that much. Yeah, I can't imagine these people, uh, these civil servants wanting to put so much tyranny on people. Don't they understand that the next time it could be their children or their wife or their whoever out there at these events being harassed and uh, accosted by people just like them. But I also want to talk about the events of today. You know, one of the most uh, interesting things to me about the Alex Jones radio show today was when you guys encountered the journalist from Belgium. And, you know, Alex says, you know, do you believe the official story? He said, well, I'm not supposed to have an opinion. What was your opinion about that, Darren McBreen? Well, that's the thing. It, my opinion is this whole thing is going to backfire on the establishment big time because this is a direct assault on our First Amendment. And in the process, they're only waking people up. I talk to a lot of people who don't necessarily have an opinion one way or another, whether Lee Harvey Oswald acted alone but now, because of the barricades, because of the censorship, they are wondering what the government has to hide. It's, I mean, why would people still believe this official story? Many people don't, but that's not the point of why you guys are down there in the first place. Yes, we want to recognize the, uh, the atrocity that happened to John F. Kennedy, but we also want to expose the second, excuse me, the First Amendment being trampled on all over. So Darren McBreen, tell us briefly uh, any other experiences you've had out there. Well, my experience is we are winning the info war, and that is the good news. And let me just appeal to those of you who are close to the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Please, by all means, come and join us. This is an attack on our First Amendment. We are fighting for the First Amendment right now. So we need thousands of Paul Revere's, if you will. You know, 50 years ago, they silenced JFK. But they cannot, they will not silence us tomorrow during the 50-year anniversary. So come join us. Let's take back the First Amendment. All right. Thank you, Darren McBreen. We definitely look forward to more reports. I know you guys got a lot more planned, a lot of special surprises we can't even talk about yet. But thank you for your time, Darren McBreen. All right. Thank you, Jakari.
Now, the crew in Dallas will be giving us updates all the way up till Saturday, so you don't want to miss any of that. PrisonPlanet.tv, Infowars.com forward slash show, and also Ustream to get all the updates and the latest information. Now, if you're watching this live on PrisonPlanet.tv or even tomorrow morning on YouTube, you don't want to miss the gathering at Below Garden. That's going to be at 11 a.m. tomorrow, Friday, or if you're watching this on YouTube, pretty much get up there right now at 11 a.m. Below Garden. That's 1014 Main Street, and that's in Dallas, Texas. You can meet the InfoWars crew out there. You can meet Alex. You can shake his hand. You can march with him during the radio show down to Dealey Plaza. You definitely don't want to miss that. And also stop by PrisonPlanet.tv and get yourself a 15-day free trial. I'm Jakari Jackson for the InfoWars Nightly News, and we'll see you again tomorrow night. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show.